Round by Round with James Gogie. Tonight's edition, we're here in West Coast, Texas at the Pantera Boxing Gym. We got a special guest on our show tonight, international, renowned, cut man extraordinaire, <laughs> Ted Lucio. Cut man, if you watch all those big UFC pay-per-views, you'll see him there in the corner with Ronda Rousey, Cain Velasquez, uh, who else, Nick Diaz, Name some all of them. Well, him or I'm assigned to. Yeah, and he's also the cut man to former WBC champions Danny Swift Garcia from Philadelphia and our own Omar Figueroa from West Coast, Texas. Now, the reason I have Ted on this show is he's going to be giving you his knowledge and wisdom from the 20 plus years he's been in the business of being a cut man. One thing I noticed in the Valley is the guy, these young coaches coming up, they need this knowledge and wisdom. It's not that they're dumb or stupid. They're smart and intelligent, but they need to have the knowledge and wisdom on how to handle, pro handle cuts properly when they're, in, when they're working the corner with their fighters. A lot of times, I see them in these four, six round fights. Oh my God, I'm kind of like cringing. You know, it's not that, like I said, it's they're dumb. It's they need that knowledge and wisdom on knowing how to stop the cut, stop the swelling. Uh, apply the Vaseline and all that other stuff. Uh, let me give you a story why a cut man is so important. Uh, back in 97, Jacob Stitch Duran, uh, working with one of the first champions of Stitch Duran, was uh, Raul Marquez on a pay-per-view card. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya was the main event. I, uh, we, were, we had Raul Marquez, uh, the, the IBF junior middleweight champion. Vegas, big fight, big scene. Stitch Duran, he was just coming up as a come man, earning his bones. That fight made him that night. I'm going to tell you why. Raul Marquez had five real bad cuts he incurred during the 12-round course of that fight. C cuts that were so bad, he had it. When we took him to the hospital, he needed over 100 stitches to get him sewed up. Now, going into the 11th round, the doctor, Flip Wabanski at the time, the commission doctor, wanted to stop the fight because the cuts were that bad. Stitch Duran. Went up to Flip and goes up, told Flip, don't worry about it, Stitch. I mean, don't worry about it, Doc. Uh, doc. I'll have the fights under control. I'll have the cuts under control. Just give me one more round. He stopped all the cuts. Going into the 12th round, it was even. Raw went out there and pulled that, you know, the 12th round out, which kept him his title, which get him, you know, back then in the days when you're champion, you know, you had that belt, you got a guarantee your paydays because Stitch was able to stop those cuts and have him under control. He was able to go that next round, win the round, keep his title, and get another payday. That's how Stitch made his name in that fight, because it was, ugh, it was a, probably the most gruesome, the toughest fight I've ever been in. And Stitch, by that, you know, by that performance, boy, he started getting calls from everywhere. But here's his partner. Uh, Stitch is no longer with USC. <laughs> it's Ted Lucio. You know, hey. When I talked to Ted Lucio a month or so ago at that weigh-in at the last fight car we had here, boy, he gave me a college education on cuts. This is the type of knowledge I've only heard from the great cut men of all time. Guys like the late, great Joe Souza, uh, Norm Lockwood, uh, Chuck Bodet, guys that have been around, Percy Richardson, you know, guys, uh, what's his name, Ace Murata, Lou Duva's guy. When Ted started talking to me about cuts, I kind of like got my attention on like, man, you know, you're always learning in this business. And when he talked to me that day, boy, I was just absorbing knowledge I never knew before. So today, we're going to do a three-part series. First part being the basics of being a cut man, handling the basic cuts. Then we're going to go into part two. Mr. Lucio is going to talk about the advanced cuts where you really earn your money as a cut man. Then he's also gonna talk about how to wrap hands and how to eliminate the swelling from the face when you know when swelling occurs and uh, you know everything you need to be a cut man. But go ahead, Ted, what's your philosophy of being, of being a cut man and what do you think the purpose of a cut man is when you're in a fight? Well, for basically our purpose is, our purpose definitely is to keep the fighter in the fight, bottom line, you know. Uh, our job is not to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, make the decision if the fighter should continue uh, fighting or not, uh, no matter how bad the cut is. Our job is to make sure that we keep him in the fight because 
you know, that's what the crowd wants. That's what the people want. That's what the, the promoters want. Okay. They, they, they want to please the crowds. Um, so that's our, our job is to make sure that we give those fighters that, that extra round, two rounds, three rounds. Keep the swelling down because you know what? There's, there are guys that, that go out there and swell and cut early, yet <laughs> they have the ability to, to bring it on at the end. Uh, the late great, uh, what's this called, um, from, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, UFC? Thunder, Thunder, uh, Arturo Gatti. Gatti. Arturo Gatti would swell early in a fight, and his cut man, Joe Souza, Joe Souza, rest in peace, would always keep him in the fight, and, and Arturo would always find a way to, to knock out his opponent. I think one of the big ones was Wilson Rodriguez, who was uh, one of the original uh, um, uh, Boxing After Dark episodes where uh, Arturo had just won the IBF championship, mm -hmm. got swollen up big time. His eyes were closed, he got dropped uh, against uh, 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 Wilson Rodriguez, and uh, he was able to uh, to stay in the fight and ended up knocking out Wilson Rodriguez yeah. with the help of his cut man, keeping the swelling down. So that's, so what? That's, what they're, that's what our job is for. To make the fight, let, let the fighter go extra rounds. He, he might need to go you know, to win the fight. Okay, now, this first part we're gonna do is just the basics of being a cut man. The tools. The, the basic tools. tools you need to be in a cut man. What do you tools. have here, uh, Chad? I got, I got my favorite, my, my, my favorite uh, end swell that I got, and what this is is a cold compress. It's, as you can see, it's, a, it's not like an original knot knocker, which is real thick. This piece of aluminum here that I have, or stainless steel that I have, uh, was made by Rudy Hernandez. Uh, and uh, you know it's, a, it's got a big surface. It's mobile, you know, where you can get it around curves and uh, and contours of the face. So this is my answer that I like to use. This is my go-to. Okay, uh, the medicine, the medicines that we use uh, for basic, the, for basic cuts. One of the uh, approved medicines by every athletic commission worldwide is going to be known as uh, adrenaline. One one thousand, the mixture, also known as epinephrine. Okay. Adrenaline, this is one of the approved medicines that you can use, okay? Secondly, uh, you know, we got our basic gauze, we got our basic tape, uh, we got our basic uh, swabs. Our basic swabs, you know, our basic swabs are gonna be uh, made of cotton, rolled of cotton. Uh, we got long ones for long cuts. Uh, I got some uh, some big heavy set ones here. These are good for up the nose. When, uh, when a fighter uh, is bleeding through the nose, you stick it up, you apply that pressure. Try and get that nosebleed to stop. Okay. Okay. Vaseline. We already know about Vaseline. Vaseline is uh, is used for two different things. Vaseline is applied to the face to to keep that leather boxing glove from sticking, cutting, and causing big contusions. Okay. But I like to use it also as an, an, an uh, as a as a filler if a cut happens to occur. Two ways you can use it. You can use it at room temperature. It gets real slimy and stuff like that. You can apply it all over the face, over the ears and so forth. Make a nice uh, face mask of, of Vaseline. Uh, I like to work it into the eyebrows. Eyebrows, you know, some guys got uh, some hairy eyebrows. Let's take a look at our, our local champion here, JP Pinal. He's got some, some, some good heavy eyebrows there. What I like to do sometimes is when I apply the Vaseline, I'll work it backwards into the eyebrow. So that way it gets into the eyebrow and because sometimes you can just surface it. You want to work it back into the eyebrow deep. like so. Deep, yeah. deep. That way there's a good mixture of Vaseline throughout the throughout the eyebrow. Work it around the, the corners of the eyes. Sometimes guys will give you their lips, put it on their ears, around their neck. Shoulders, a lot of guys like to put it on the shoulders for that same situation. They want that those punches to slide off the shoulders. I personally don't like Vaseline throughout the whole body. That's me. Yeah. Because what happens is Vaseline will clog pores. You can't breathe. And then your body can't breathe. You can overheat. If, if a guy's ashy on the legs or you want him to break a sweat, don't put Vaseline on his legs. A lot of, the legs generate a lot of heat and they try and sweat. If you clog them pores, yeah, I guarantee you a fighter's going to feel it by the end of the night. That he's, he's, legs go up. He's overheating in there. So avoid Vaseline. Get yourself some of that stuff that they use, sweet sweat yes. or, uh, or Abilene. Uh, Abilene. Abilene. Use that on the body so that way, you know, uh, the fighter can break a good sweat, stay warm, but at least the body can breathe. That's just me. Okay. Those now, are some of my tools. Okay. Let's do a big, 
Talk about the basic cuts and how do you stop them. Just a big, what, what's a basic cut you see a lot? Basic cut we see a lot is obviously going to be on the brow. Their lacerations where uh, they run uh, horizontally on the eyebrow. They'll sometimes run uh, along the eye line. As you can see, you have the, uh, the eye socket here. They'll get cut right in this area on the brow. Okay. Sometimes they can occur here. As you can see, Mr. Uh, JP's been cut down here on the bottom from a high cheekbone. This isn't a very dangerous cut right here because blood's going to flow down and not obstruct his vision. On top, that's where it'll happen. As you can see, JP's been cut up here. Whether it was in a boxing match or a street fight, we don't know yet. <laughs> but uh, he's had one up here. Okay. But these cuts here could be dangerous because blood could flow into the eye. So. As, as myself, uh, as a basic cut, uh, you know, you get only uh, pretty much one minute. In reality, we only get 50 seconds now. Because at 10 seconds, they want you out of the ring. But what I would do is with, a, with a, even a standard swab, what I, what I would do is I would soak the swab with some adrenaline, apply it to the cut. We're gonna use this, this uh, scar here as an example for the cut. Okay, and you would just pretty much press it onto the cut like so. Okay, for how long? I would leave it there for like 30, 35 seconds or so. 35 you know? seconds. 35 seconds. Okay, that's the common. And what the adrenaline is going to do is it's a blood, it's a, it's a, it's a blood vessel constrictor. It uh, makes the blood vessels constrict. Hopefully, you can coagulate that that cut where it's not going to have a problem. So uh, this is the basic. On the cut, at the end, before you get kicked out of the, the ring by the, by, the, by the commission, you apply Vaseline to the top of it, and then the fighter goes back out. In boxing, because they work uh, like a one to two, uh, um, they work uh, five to six, up to 12 rounds. Sometimes, as a cornerman, you want to tell your fighter, hey, protect that eye. Let that medicine go to work. You know, you want that medicine to go to work. So you know what, if they're ahead on the cards, and they're boxing from outside, protect that eye so that there's not a problem. So that applies to all basic cuts, the, the technique you did. You, Ted, talk about how you you, 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 got, you got the Adrenaline 1000 in a little bottle and you squeeze it. Yeah, I use uh, like an eyedropper, eyedropper uh, or like an old uh, uh, Visine dropper. Make sure it's uh, clean, sterilized with some saline. Clean it out, let it dry, and then you fill it up because on these uh, uh, bottles, you have to extract the adrenaline with a syringe. So you would extract a, a certain amount. You probably extract, this is a 30 milliliter bottle. You probably extract maybe about 10 milliliters to about 15 milliliters and put it in a, in a squirt bottle. And that's how you would, you would actually, you know, drip it on. I've seen cut men actually use it where JP, say for instance, he was cut. JP, close your left eye. And he would act like this, and he would squirt it on from the vet, from the uh, from that bottle. from the squirt bottle. The, the adrenaline one one thousand. Exactly. Jim Strickland does that. Jim Strickland does that. Yeah. I, there was a guy back in uh, uh, in California that would do that as well. He would put some some gauze here, squirt it. That would be his adrenaline, and then he would apply his pressure. Uh, pressure because we always, always. What would he put? Okay, once you put that adrenaline. If, if you're not going to use that uh, the swab swab to put the adrenaline in, and you just use a that. Uh, the, you know the squeeze technique with the uh, eyedropper. What do you what do you put the pressure with? Uh, what were the pressures? What do I use the pressure with? Do you use as it? far as an advanced technique, which we're not on yet? You can just get some rolled gauze, rolled gauze, and put the pressure. Or oh, after after you put the uh, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, and you can you can squirt it in there because keep in mind you get a lot of surgeons that when you have an open cavity they actually have a syringe of adrenaline that to spray in the cavity of the body to, uh, to slow down any kind of blood flow from uh, vascular veins, okay? Vascular uh, uh, capillaries and stuff like that. In surgery, that's what they use uh, epinephrine for. I've, I, I, so hmm. that's the technique that he's using there, Jim Strickland. Now, uh, you can use gauze to apply your pressure and then when you're ready, you can apply the Vaseline to go, okay? That would be a, a basic cut. You get into an advanced cut, it gets a little bit different. Now, when he starts getting swelling, show, the, uh, show our listening audience how to apply that end swell and how to keep the swelling from getting bigger. 
this is what I do as a, as For example, a general. Swift, Danny Swift Garcia. Danny, uh, Danny has a, Danny swells on this side. Uh, for those that know Danny, Danny uh, does get hit with right hands in the beginning of the fight, and then he makes his adjustment, and he's able to catch him. But he's always been a, a guy that swells over this left eye. As a cut man, what you might want to do is you want to make a habit of doing preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance is doing stuff even before the stuff gets there, okay? You change your oil on your vehicle, it's preventative maintenance. It's going to keep you from blowing up your car, right? So the preventative maintenance is, and I had a, a chance to work with, uh, who's the, the uh, lightweight out of, uh, um, uh, top rank out of uh, uh, San Antonio right now? Oh, on HBO. Nahara. Yeah. Nahara. Nahara. No, 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 not no. Tanahara. No, Nahara. Nahara, yeah. Nahara. Tuska, yeah. Ivan Nahara, right? Oh, Ivan Nahara, right? Uh, I had an opportunity to work this corner, and uh, before we went out there, he, uh, I told him, I said, listen, uh, you do your thing, but when I'm in the corner, I do stuff preventatively. Don't think that there's a problem with your face, because sometimes fighters, when they see an end swell or something, they go, what's wrong? And then they, they start panicking, thinking that there's something wrong with their face. So I advise uh, Ivan that, hey, you know what? I do stuff preventatively, I, just so that if you oh, do start so, to swell. So prevent, so some of your Exactly. So as a, as a cut man, you want to already start rubbing, rubbing, getting that cold, you know, cold during the fight. Even if they're not swelling. Even start. if they're not swelling, because you want to be preventative. Because you never know that a swell can just start at any given time. And, and, and blow up. And blow up. So if you're a little bit preventative, you're keeping that skin cool right so, off the so get-go. Okay? I like to, to rub it to the sides. Rub it to the sides. Don't want to apply too pressure. Now, there's a pro and a con to it. The pro is you're, you're moving a swelling. Okay? You're moving a swelling. The con is you don't want to move a swelling because you can move it from here to here and you can cause a big hematoma here to the sides. Yeah. But let's be realistic. In boxing, if his eye were to swell underneath here or on top here and he's having a, a problem with vision, you got to keep him in the fight. You have to move it. Good example is uh, Lucas Matisse when he fought Danny Garcia. Danny closed his eye. And you could see that his cut man was actually using his thumb to move the swell. Which we'll talk about in the advanced part. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He actually kept Lucas in the fight, fight. longer. So that's the experience that he had, and, and you have to move the swelling sometimes, so, and so forth. You can apply pressure, apply pressure, and so forth, okay? Now, in MMA, one of the biggest injuries that occur around eye sockets, unlike boxing, is broken orbital bones. We experience those a lot. The reason being is because we're dealing with a four ounce glove, and the body cannot take that kind of shot over a period of time. Which, which we'll be talking in advance part. Exactly, so you gotta be careful, especially on the bottom side orbital, where it usually breaks, is applying just the pressure here. You're trying to keep it. You cannot rub that. You're gonna irritate the fighter. The fighter's gonna literally, if, if he doesn't punch you, you lucked out, because that's how painful it is. I had a female fighter in the UFC. I, as soon as I put the swell here, she, you can see it, she cringed. I have no idea how she fought those three rounds with a broken orbital bone, but she did it. She had a big set of balls, I'll tell you that much. But you gotta be careful. You can apply. You can motion out, motion out. Use this as a cooler, too, you know? It's cold enough. Bring your fighter back to life, around the head, around the head, you know? Around the head, but around the eyes, you can roll it back and forth. So, to end, that was part one, okay? Excellent, excellent wisdom and knowledge he's gained through the years. Great knowledge he could pass down to you guys that are learning how to be cut, man. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end this part, and we're going to go into part two next. Thank you. All right.